Hi, I'm Kira. Hi, I'm Kira. Kira. Kira Dira. Hi, I'm Kira. Oh, oh, that's me. Hey guys, I'm Kira. I'm gonna start this off with fetus me. Young me, baby me. She was so happy. She always had a big smile on her face and she was ready to conquer the world. Flash forward and you have this me. Adult me, teen me, whatever me I am now. You have me now. And I look back at pictures of her then. And I feel so bad that I couldn't protect her more. I feel so bad that I couldn't save her from all the scary things that tried to destroy her. And I can't help but pity her because she was so small and fragile and sweet and loving and caring and people tried to tear that down. My mama, she was a functioning alcoholic and she, she tried, she, I think she did. She really tried, but I had to raise her way more than she had to raise me. And I also had to help raise my little brother. When I was about seven, I started watching him and staying home alone and trying to clean puke off her mouth and pick up beer bottles before my brother woke up so he wouldn't know how much of a mess she was. And my stepdad, he was an abusive, he was an abusive jerk and I had to protect my brother from him and I, I couldn't protect my mom and my brother and me all at the same time. That's not how it works. I was seven, eight, nine. I wasn't a superhero, even though I thought I was sometimes. Story time. My, my dad remarried my stepmom. She had two sons. Not only was she abusive, but her stepson, he was 15. I was 10 years old. He asked me to play doctor. I didn't, I didn't think about it. It was in the middle of the night and everybody else was asleep and I was on a pilot, my dad made me in the living room floor because they didn't have enough bedrooms for me to have a bed, and I only stayed with him once every couple of weeks because it kind of scared me to go out there, but I just, he was the only one who was nice to me and I trusted him. So when he touched me, I was confused and hurt, I didn't know what to do, I froze up and it was dark. I just, I was a kid, what are we supposed to do, what are kids supposed to do in a situation like that? It wasn't the first time it happened to me, it wasn't the last. When I was younger, and that used to happen all the time, I used to stare out my window and the moon was the only thing I could see, and the stars, and I would pray that they would come and save me. It took me a long time to realize nothing's gonna save me but myself. It took me a long time to realize that being afraid doesn't help anything. But it's hard not to be afraid. It's hard not to just lay down and give up. And it's so hard when every day of your life is filled with constant pain. And you think it will never get better. <laughs> I just don't want to hurt you. And it all feels so terrible. Like this body, this world, this isn't meant for me. And I'm not, I don't feel real. And I don't really exist, but I'm here. After I started getting over that and I took two jumps forward, I took about 30 backwards. 
junior year I was diagnosed with lupus, which is a chronic illness that attacks your like internal organs and your muscles and your bones and your joints and mine was attacking my kidneys. They were shutting down, I was gonna die. Great. No. I'm really glad I didn't die. That's two thumbs up for me. Good job, buddy. Did something. I cherish life, like, a lot more than I used to. I, every day is, I'm thankful that I'm not lying in a hospital bed somewhere, being even worse than a grave. And I, I understand now that I didn't deserve all those bad things that happened to me. I didn't deserve any of it, and none of it's my fault. But you have to have the bad things so you can fully understand the good things. And some people let the bad things overwhelm them and overshadow every good thing in their life, and I used to be one of them. Not anymore. Because you, you have to have the fear to understand how astonishingly strong you are. If you're not afraid, you won't know what you can handle. Without being afraid of something, we can't conquer that fear. We can't move past it and we can't grow and change and mature into something remarkable. It's like, I bet a caterpillar is afraid when their cocoon starts morphing around them and forming. And when they come out, they're like, wow, I'm really something amazing now. And right here, right now, in that moment, even still as a caterpillar, I'm still amazing. I'm still capable of becoming that butterfly. I'm still, I'm still trying to move past it all. And I'm going to, because I'm strong and I'm trying. And I refuse to give up. And I'm still afraid of the dark. I'm still afraid of that scary place that I was in. I'm still afraid that somebody is going to sneak into my living room at night. And I'm still afraid things are going to go completely and horribly wrong. But fear cannot keep you pinned to that dark living room floor if you don't let it. And fear cannot keep you tied down to that hospital bed if you don't let it. And fear cannot keep you from flying and being that beautiful butterfly that you were meant to be. You stand up, you look it in the face. You'll find the things in the dark are the same as in the light. Only you have the power to turn the lights on. And I'm gonna turn the lights on.